excited, guys. We are. Whoa. Whoa. For <laughs> a solid year. Yes, guys. It's our anniversary. <laughs> We've seen one year, two, two years, years, three, three years, years, and four, four years. years. Oh, yes, guys. Amazing. It's, it's been God. <laughs> My name is Amaka. My name is Kachi. Together, we are the Perfect Man. Welcome to our channel. Yeah. Do you know that? <laughs> what? Not just that we are four. Our YouTube channel is three. Three years. Remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is actually an, an, a double yes. anniversary. We should talk about YouTube in the next video. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Let's should. talk about YouTube. <laughs> Three years on YouTube. <laughs> Three years on YouTube. Next video. Yeah, true. But anyway, it's not about YouTube in this video. We're talking about marriage. Being married for four good four years. years. It's been awesome. It's been an awesome experience. Oh yes. Um, for me, I would say this is the hardest year. It's been the hardest year. It's been the hardest year for us. We've experienced the loss of a loved one. We've yeah. experienced the switch in career, illness of a loved one um you know so much so much so breakdown much. of our car is a major factor <laughs> for us this year our car yes. has not functioned optimally this year well, a lot has happened we've experienced so much this year i missed the major blessings of this year in this year we added to the family yeah one more baby girl <laughs> yes guys we are parents of two in our fourth year wow wait, wait. We, are, we became four in our fourth year yeah we became the family, family of, of four. four in four years can we just say hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> okay we want to share the lessons we've learned in this four years what are the lessons we've learned in this four years hmm. you know just like an undergraduate in the university who has undergone a four-year course right so right. at this point we can say we're about to graduate <laughs> <laughs> I get. Right. <laughs> I did a four year course. I did a Should have graduated five already. Five <laughs> years course. So I'm still in school if we're to be in school right now. <laughs> but then, so what are the lessons we've learned in these four years? Hmm. Who goes first? Go first. Ladies okay, first. Okay. Um, firstly, we've mentioned how we've experienced some hard times in this year. And I must say, my first lesson, the one that is hitting me right now, is that hard times hard times tough situations in marriage brings out the best or the worst in your spouse you see you get to see them for who they are mm. you get to see them for who they are it's just mm. like you're now out of the cloud nine you can now see what exactly they are made of you see how patient they are how irritable they can be mm. how um understanding they are so sometimes hard times brings out that real self and it also makes you know what you are in for but for us our hard times have actually made us closer it has you know we have dug deep into our inner selves we now know more about ourselves and it has strengthened our relationship so sometimes god brings hard times to help us grow help us grow in ourselves and help us grow as a couple uh, truth be told, there are ups and downs in marriages, and every marriage has would have their ups mm -hmm. and their downs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in these four years, we've had our up time, and we've actually had our down time, and we right. experienced it really, really, really well this year. Yes. But thank God, like my wife said, it has actually brought out better things from us, mm -hmm. and it's a very good lesson. Yes. Um, for me, I'd like to first of all start by saying that it can get better as you make progress in marriage. So the first year, the second year, the third year, and then this fourth year, right. it has actually been better and better mm. and better. So uh, people come into marriage and, you know, different mindsets, different, you know, ideologies. If the first time we did a video similar to this, we talked about how to navigate your first year in marriage. We dropped some points there and, you know, talking about similar topic right now, uh, just a little thing, just a few things 
you know, might have changed or definitely has changed. Oh, but upgraded. one thing I would <laughs> always say, or I would say again, is that it is getting better. So the longer, the better. Now, when I say better, what I mean is there are certain, there are certain things that, you know, we, we would normally quarrel about in, oh. in those years, you know, uh, certain things that on a normal day was a big deal. Right. But as we make progress, we are beginning to realize that, you know, these things are not really as serious. So the number of times we quarrel has gone really, really mm. down. <laughs> the number of times we, you know, we have misunderstandings, we, we, disagree, we disagree, on disagree on certain things, things yeah. have reduced. Yeah. Because, so the understanding has actually become a lot better. I overlook you know, things on a normal day I would have shouted at. That's because understanding has actually increased. So I understand right. my wife better. And the longer you go in marriage, the better it can be. You know, that's actually one lesson that stands out for me. So it gets easier and better with time. Yeah. Right. That's, in uh, marriage, you have to have hard conversations. Hmm. You have to have hard conversations so that you can be free. So you can let go. So you can express yourself. I think it was in this year we that word declutter your marriage rang, rang a bell. Declutter your marriage. When I heard it, I was like, declutter your marriage. You say about decluttering the wardrobe, but you never really heard about decluttering your marriage. Decluttering your marriage is opening up the places where you have closed up, opening up the areas where you felt he doesn't have to know, she doesn't have to know. Having that open, unended conversation that is free of judgment, that is free of, you know, um, what's that word, backstabbing or something. Like having that conversation. Mm, yeah. Judgment is actually... The judgment. Bible says you confess one to another and it is important in marriage. If, if marriage wants to go forward, if a marriage has to thrive, mm. if a marriage has to be happy, two of you should confess to one another. And that is one of the things I've learned in this year. It has helped us a lot. A lot. Yes. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually no need to cover up things for too long. Yes. The truth is that you would find reasons to cover things up for a while. But the longer, the more dangerous. So as, yeah. as quick as possible, let it open. Let, no matter how terrible or no matter how bad you think something is. Ah, actually, I want to quickly digress. Um, I was in a conversation with some friends and then they said, there are certain things that you should not tell your wife. Don't tell your wife because you're going to kill your marriage. You're going to spoil your marriage. Well, it might not work in all marriages, but in a Christian marriage where we preach forgiveness, we preach understanding, um, if God, if Jesus could forgive our sins, there's really, 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 it's nothing difficult for us to, to understand and, you know, and forgive. And you know, in one of these episodes on Bible couple gist we've had, yeah, Adam and Eve, we yeah. talked about naked and unashamed. Yeah. Both of you have to be naked and unashamed. Ashamed. Marriage doesn't stop sexual advances. Mm. Preach it. As a young guy, and mm. not just a young guy, a, a cute fine young guy. guy. <laughs> a tall, dark, and handsome guy. Man, I don't know whether it's a generation issue, but this generation, they don't care. They don't really care. Even, if, even when you come out saying that I'm married, they still come after you. Is it supposed to be a lesson for marriage? Oh God, I've had my share, really. Okay. I've had my share, and it so wasn't so funny. So how do you so overcome? Funny. Maybe that should be the lesson. It here. wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. How do you overcome? Maybe on a different video, we'll talk fully about how to. This, how is this a lesson? How is it a lesson? Yes. You know, you will assume normally that you know when I'm getting, once I get married, uh, people would you know stay away. People would okay. stay clear. People would know that I am married. Hello, I'm married. <laughs> you know, but then it doesn't stop. Right. It doesn't stop at all. I think married men. Are, In fact, married it increases. men are more attractive. Married men are more attractive to singles. Yes, yes, yes. Or maybe I'll even talk about how I almost dated a married man. <laughs> maybe that on another video, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay. okay yeah, so it's fine. that's a lesson for me. It's a lesson for you, but it's still an ongoing lesson. Ah, it is actually still an all ongoing lesson. All you girls, stay away from my husband. Stay away from my husband. All of you, all of you. Stay. The Lord will help us. Love language matters in marriage. Hmm. It cannot be overemphasized. Love language matters in marriage. And there are times when your love language will change. 
I remember when I was pregnant, my love language was food. Hmm. Yes, I wanted food. my husband to buy me food. Food. Buy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's on a lighter note. It's okay for partners or spouses understand your love language, understand each other's love language. You should be able to express love in the way that will be most appreciated by your partner. Marriage should be fun. Marriage should be like a safe haven. Marriage should be a place where you're like, oh my God, I've got my own. Love language in marriage can change. So it's important to pay attention to the language that is, that is, um, that is in line with that season. Pregnancy season, um, postpartum season, mm-hmm. um, breastfeeding season. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but for real, it is important that the partner is sensitive to the love, love language, language at the time when your husband is going through financial turbulence his love language is, is bound to change when he's going through an emotional downtime his love language will change there are times when he wants special attention mm. special time spent together and there are times when he just wants physical touch so you have to be sensitive to know how would he feel most loved is it when you tell him how good he is is it when you show him how good he is or is it when you just stay down with him just stay with him without saying a word just be able to understand what language he wants to hear at that time a spouse a spouse might be buying gifts for the wife buying gifts for the wife whereas the wife just wants him to come home early and spend time with and her. spend time with her so it's important <laughs> Did I throw a jab at you? No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah, love language is very important. For me, the next I would like to talk about, still on sex, is the fact that mm. children, or should I say the little ones, the babies, mm. they can actually affect your sex life wow. as a couple. Wow. So we're talking about four years. All right, so you might not have it the way you used to have it in your first year. Mm. You can imagine where you're about to, you know, you know, you're about to, and then suddenly, and it, it looks like that they, 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 they monitor you. It is at exactly that time that they will start crying or start, you know, moving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these ch- children. So they can actually affect your, your sex life. And at that point, when they start crying, mama. <laughs> Cannot concentrate while the children are crying. While the Moving babies are crying. on. So she will just drop, leave. She, let me even say the way it is. She will just leave me and say, Sorry, babe, babe, the babies are crying. <laughs> you know? And then I'm, you're, I'm already there. What would a mother hand. do? And you know, the funny thing is that for, for us, the guys, we don't really, really, really care. If we can actually let's do this thing, you know what? Let's finish. Let's finish. You will not take time. Let's just finish and then you will not go. My mind, my mind. How can you hear your baby cry and not be moved? Like I don't understand. I don't get it. But it's well. We will pass that level very soon. (laughs) Yes, we will. But then for 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 the you need you need to actually know that yes, it 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 happens. Yeah. Especially that period when 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 she's breastfeeding and the babies are still very little they, they need a lot of attention high attention becomes divided mm. whether you like it or not that brings me to my next lesson i've learned in marriage my four years in marriage that being a wife is not the same as being a mother mm. the two roles are different they they cannot be interchanged Mm-mm. Mm. They cannot be. You are a wife to your husband and a mother to your children. Mm -hmm. You are not a mother to your husband. You could almost want to mother your husband. And that's, wow, wawoo. Yes, it's true. (laughs) You want to treat your husband like your baby. You treat your baby and it can work. Call it work. Call it work. Yeah, so as, as women, it is important that you be able to separate these roles mother and wife your husband needs you as a wife Mm -hmm. your children needs you as a mother mother. so you should be able to balance this i'm still learning but to know that these roles are different and not to jeopardize these two roles is what i am learning to to do 
to do. Lastly, I would like to say also that respect in marriage is relative. Mm. Recent times, I've had a couple of my friends, a very close ones, you know, talk to me about respect. And then when they do this, I just remember back then in our first year when it used to be a serious issue. I want to be respected. Mm. Every man wants to be respected. Mm. But the truth is that what respect means to Mr. A might be different from what respect means to Mr. B. And most of the what times... What does respect mean to you, though? What respect means to me is very simple. Though. I come back from work. <laughs> And then you greet me and say, baby, welcome. Your food is ready. That is respect. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, that's respect. Respect also is, I tell you to do something. Without, um, don't, don't, Argument. don't, don't be stubborn. Stubborn, stubbornness to me. Well, stubbornness is one thing, but it's interpreted as disrespect. Mm. So I, I tell you to do this or do it this way. And you say, no, you don't want to do it that way. You want to do it your own way. It's disrespect. But, you know, for some other men, it's, that's not it, too. For some other men, what they want is, good morning, daddy. Good mm. morning, mommy. For some other men, go here. Don't talk. Mm. Don't bring your opinion. Don't question. Don't query. Don't ask me, where did you, why, why are you coming back this time? Mm. That is not disrespect for me. Oh. But for some other men... A woman, your wife, asking you, where are you coming back from? By this time of the night, they are disrespectful. Mm. For some other men, a woman talking when they are talking is disrespect. Okay, based on how your friends have told you about respect, mm. your lesson mm. in marriage is that respect is relative, right? Yeah, it's relative to the individual and also to the way, you know, the both parties were raised. I think respect is also mutual. Respect is mutual. The man would be respected if he also respects his wife. And the true, wife would be respected if he true, respects true, the husband. True, true, That's another thing. It's important. I think there was a video I asked you, love and respect, which comes first? And I said, love. Love, right. Love comes first. Because love where there is first. love, respect is easy. But then, on a final note, like we did in the first video, we would not fail to repeat this truth that God at the center of your marriage is actually... The best thing that can happen to any marriage. Mm -hmm. For us, we have God at the center. From the beginning till today until the very end, it will be God. Jesus Christ is the rock and the foundation of our marriage. And so there is no reason why we're not going to soar high. No there reason. is no reason why we're, going, we're not going to move ahead, go forward. Like our marriage still says, Psalm 1830, as, as for, for God, God his, his way is, is perfect. perfect. And our marriage is God's way. It has no choice yeah. than to be perfect. I hope you've gotten one or two things from our sharing. Yeah, it's our <laughs> anniversary. We have so many things to do today. So we're going we're gonna to leave you guys here. And um, we hope to see you guys again. Send us your wishes in the comments. All right? Send us yeah, your wishes, your prayers. Say happy anniversary. Just say something we nice love to you. us. All right? Because we love you too. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. Press the subscribe button. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.